if I can feel the emotion of gratitude before the event occurs, then my body would be so objective that it's living in that future. Hello and welcome to the Pacific Channel. I'm your host, Steve Doherty. In this audio clip, a host named Kelly asked Dr. Joe Dispenza, what about people who are too sick to do the work? What about those people who can't breathe without pain or who can't do anything because they are in so much pain? Dr. Joe is going to answer by saying that he doesn't mean to sound demeaning, but that no one can tell him anymore that they are too sick. He has seen people who were on the verge of suicide, who were very sick, do the work and recover. He has seen people too weak to drive to his week-long events who did the work anyway and fully recovered. In other words, there really is no excuse, right? But what I would like to say is that this is why it's a good idea to not allow yourself to get that sick. Do the work before it gets to that point. The way it works is that a negative thought that you think will create a negative emotion in your body that you can describe such as anger or sadness, guilt, or depression. And then if you allow that negative thought to continue, if you don't find a way to change the way you think, it will create a sensation in your body. And if you ignore this sensation, it becomes a physical pain. And then if you ignore the thoughts that created that pain, then it becomes chronic pain or disease. And then if you still ignore the original vibrational discord or negative thought you had in the first place, it will become a chronic disease. This is why it's so important to change your thinking and to do this work. Next, Dr. Joe sort of goes on a rampage of what a person should do if they think that they are too sick to do the work. What he is about to say is that if you gain the knowledge of the what and the why, then the how becomes easier. So you have to get beyond the body. That's the work. That's the work to begin with. It's just that if a person is very sick, they have allowed the body to become the mind too much, but it's never too late. No matter how sick you are, you can do the work. Let's listen to Dr. Joe explain this now, and then we'll talk about another option that may help make it easier for someone in chronic pain. I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. Um, yeah, I mean, we are our own generators of energy and of healing and of manifestation. We are co-creators with life and everything that we need is right where we are, no matter yeah. how for someone listening who is in constant pain or going through treatment and can barely get out of bed, let alone, you know, they're just weak and in pain and, and you know, how, how, is, how do they do the work when it's unbearable to even like breathe or think about doing anything or being yeah know. listen I, I i have to tell you like you, you can't tell me you're too sick to do this work any longer because we see a lot of sick people turn turn things around and, and that's not to be demeaning in any way i'm just saying that possibility is right around the corner so uh it turns out you have to get beyond your body in order to heal your body because if you're still your body your matter trying to change matter it's just going to take time and you can change your diet and you can take all these supplements and all these medications chemical balance physical balance but if you don't ever take care of that emotional component your body's believing it's living in the same environment so it's so important for people to understand that the process of change many times is not linear to the person who has a transcendental moment where there's a tumor and then it's gone you would say on the outside, oh, that person just got luckier. Why did it happen to them and not to me? But if you talk to that person, they'll tell you, I study, I read, I make sure I understand what I'm doing, I understand why I'm doing it. I haven't missed a meditation in six months. This is my medicine, nothing else has worked. <laughs> that person's determined, you know? And so they understand that to change is to get beyond their body, to get beyond all the elements in the environment, to get beyond the predictable future and the familiar past and time. And it takes practice. But every time you're able to regulate, every time you're able to create brain and heart coherence, there's more order in the nervous system. Now I know, and like uh, even people that come to our events that, uh, that are in that novice group, I, I can say without a doubt now, just keep showing up. Just keep showing up for you. Keep believing in you. Keep going at it again. You, you stay in the batter's box, keep your eyes open, start swinging at fastballs. You're gonna start hitting them if you keep practicing. And, and so a person who deals with a lot of pain, um, 
they, they, if they keep at it and they keep following the formula that we teach and do, and if they just follow that formula, they'll have their moment where they actually forget about their pain. And that, that becomes what they want more of, right? And, it's, and, and you start lowering the volume, um, to the, to, to the pain and you're moving the body out of the, the past into the present moment. And, and God, we've had so many people that have had some pretty brutal pasts with abuse, all kinds of abuse that were suicidal, had a lot of health conditions. They come to the end, you know, in their meditation where they just think they can't go any further. Getting ready to quit, you know, ready to give up. But they think about all the times they showed up for themselves, you know, and they just go, I gotta go one more time. And they go again and like a blanket is lifted off them. They see their entire past. They don't wanna change a thing in their past because it got them to this moment where they feel so whole again. And they look at their betrayers and they look at their, 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 their adversity and they, and they bless it because um, uh, they, they, and with compassion and love, they understand that they're seeing it from a greater level of consciousness. And that's the moment you see the instantaneous change. I mean, instantaneous change in their health and instantaneous change in their life and instantaneous change in their, in their attitude as well. So I would say you got to keep going and you just got to keep showing up. And this is, I mean, this is, this is the remedy that we need right now as a human family. And that's what the pandemic, you know, hopefully you're not listening to this too far in the future, but we're all, we've all experienced and we'll continue to experience just the awareness that has come from going through this global, really crazy time together. Um, but this is the remedy because the, your formula that you teach and that you've you know, refined and it's an amazing program. You're, you're teaching people. We all have the instrument we can use. So it's universal. Uh, it's accessible and it, it cultivates love and compassion and connection, which is in alignment with our source with, you know, what we're made of. So it's who we innately us, are, who we innately are. So it's realigning us with ourselves, with our souls, with our source, reconnecting, us to our human family and it is like love is the greatest healer and you're just giving people the formula and access to that and everybody has it and it's just like i love it yeah and it's kind of crazy i think you i think you know one of the most important things is it's so much easier to forget this information than to remember it. even me you know i have to say to myself okay joe dispenza what do you know and, and take a moment and just set down my cell phone and disconnect from everything and really have a thought like and keep reconstructing the model in my mind. It's so important to do that because if we understand the what and the why and the how gets easier, then we assign more meaning and more belief and more intention behind it. And, and if you have to say, okay, okay, if I'm living by these emotions that are familiar to me, then I'm signaling the same genes in the same way. Okay, now I have to be conscious of not feeling that way. And you have to make a different choice. And the hardest part about changes, not making the same choice as you did the day before, because the moment you decide to do something differently and make a new choice, it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to leave the known familiar world of the familiar emotions and thoughts and behaviors. And the body is the unconscious mind is going to want to return back to what it knows because we trained it that way. So it's a retraining process. So if the person says, okay, if I can marry a clear intention, I got to work on getting my brain more coherent. Okay. They got that in the formula. That'd be a good signal out. If I can slow my brain waves down, I can learn how to do that. I can get beyond my thinking analytical mind. I can enter the operating system of my autonomic nervous system program that. Okay. If I can combine it with an elevated emotion, really practice trading that, that suffering or that pain for something else. Yeah, it may take me a little bit to feel that emotion, but I think if I keep working at it, I'll begin to change my emotional state. When I feel that emotional state, I'm not going to be thinking about the past. I'm going to be thinking about the future. So, so the thought and the feeling, the stimulus and response, the image and the emotion is conditioning the body emotionally into the future. So the person says, okay, he said, or I read, or someone else said, the environment signals the gene. Okay, let me write that down. Environment signals the gene. Okay, I got to remember that. The end product of an experience in the environment is the emotion. Okay, um, if I'm feeling gratitude, and gratitude's emotional signature means I've just received something favorable or something wonderful just happened to me. 
if I can feel the emotion of gratitude before the event occurs, then my body would be so objective that it's living in that future. I would begin to change my gene expression. And the stronger the emotion I feel, the more I'm going to pay attention to the picture in my mind that I'm going to be remembering my future. My brain and body are going to look like the event has already occurred before it happened. And if genes make proteins and proteins are responsible for the structure and function of my body and the expression of proteins is the expression of life, then I'm going to keep signaling these genes. I'm going to keep knocking on the door every day. And I don't care if my life is falling apart. I'm not going to fall to that familiar emotion. I'm not going to speak the same way. I'm not going to think the same way. What thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? And with intention and attention, I'm going to keep reviewing them till it becomes an automatic thought in my head like you can. What, how am I going to be today? How am I going to be with my family? How am I going to be in traffic? How am I going to be with my coworkers? How am I going to be when I'm alone? And you start rehearsing who you're going to be. The brain uh, in the present moment doesn't know the difference between the outer world or the inner world. It's the brain, what it's imagining looks real. And if we're present, the brain looks like you already did it. You're priming the brain. It's no longer on record of the past. Now you're, it's a map to the future. You're, you're there in place. Keep practicing that rehearsal in your mind. It's going to become automatic and you're going to start behaving like that person. Then you said, can I teach my body emotionally what this future feels like before it happens? <laughs> If you could truly open your heart and truly feel that elevated emotion, if you kept practicing that, I promise you, you would feel more of that in your day and less of the other place. And meditation means to become familiar with. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's the game, right? So when that occurs, then it's no longer about the past and what happened to you and the story people tell about that. They're telling a story of their future. In fact, they're more in love with their future than they are with their past. They're, they're, <laughs> they believe in the future more than they believe in their past. And, and I think that when we believe in ourselves, we believe in possibilities. And when we believe in possibilities, we have to believe in ourselves. And showing up every day means you must believe it's true. When you stop showing up, then you don't believe it's true any longer. And, and, and enough people that have that kind of conviction literally step into a new body. They step into a new, a new life. They step into a new future. And I, I hope um, that that becomes a new normal. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, research says that collective networks of observers determine reality. That's the latest. Uh, so we just got to make sure enough of us are observing a different reality from an elevated place of union and connection uh, instead of separation that's, that divides communities because of survival and stress. And that's a great way to create polarity in the world and uh, the union of polarity takes place in the heart and that's where it starts it doesn't mm -hmm. end there it just starts there and when i see the heart informing the brain i saw two students that we grabbed one was chasing a little child around a one and a half year old child and he was being challenged and <clears throat> the other guy was working and staffing and running around and we got him in the chair and we said okay let's let's get some brain and heart coherence and you know, we had 15, 20 minutes to do it with these guys and you saw them way out of balance, right? They're just way out of balance. And all of a sudden, here comes that low frequency in the heart, boom, like a big drum, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, you see that uh, low frequency, the energy in the heart that's only indigenous to the heart itself starts rising. And then all of a sudden, you see it rise and then you see the sympathetic nervous system rise with it. So now we know they're totally relaxed. And they're totally awake and aware. The sympathetic nervous system is working for an arousal. When you see that kind of connection and you see someone be able to change that in a matter of moments, my, I say they should be able to do that with their eyes open at any moment. It should be such a skill. And that's, that's when we, we, we maintain our energy and our power. I can understand the problem that the host brings up because for someone with back pain, for example, they may not even be able to sit up to do the work. This is where I say, do the best that you can with where you are. If all you can do is lay on your back to listen to and follow a meditation, then do that. If all you can do is partially take a deep breath in, partially squeeze your muscles to bring that energy up from your lower energy centers, then do that. Just do your best and try to do a little better than you have before. Do what you can do and push yourself mentally to do as well as you can. That's the work anyway, right? The work is to get your body to follow your mind and not the other way around. 
So no matter where you are, you can do it and do just a little bit more. Another alternative is to do EFT to reduce or remove the pain beforehand so that you can more easily focus on your meditation. EFT is an excellent tool to address acute direct pain wherever it is in your body now. You could just tap on your karate chop point and say something general like, even though I have this pain and it's keeping me from having a good meditation, I deeply and completely accept myself. Do that three times, then tap on all the different energy meridian. points which is the top of the top of your head your inner eyebrow the side of your eye underneath your eye underneath your nose on your chin on your collarbone and then underneath your arm and each time you tap on a point like that simply say the reminder phrase of this pain if this is not enough to take the edge off then you may want to get more specific and use the EFT process on past events 
that may be causing you to feel stressed now. Of course, there's more to it than that, but you should be able to get enough pain relief just from that so that you can meditate. The point is that no matter where you are in life right now, it is never too late to do the work. Heal your body and your life. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Our channel's goal is to make it to at least 100,000 subscribers so that we can improve the content and offer you more things. And now it's shout out time. I'd like to give a shout out to Happy Grateful Mornings. I'm glad you're enjoying the video so much and I wish you the best in your endeavor to become a healer. I think you're in the right place. If you have any questions, please ask them below and I'll do my best to answer them or leave a comment about what you think about this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.